Rick and I are fascinated by the audio levels on the screen to my left. We I'm didn't even mic check, it. so the, the fact they're working is... Oh, we didn't mic check. We did not mic check. But the levels... They're looking good. good. They, look they look fine. Look really good. They're looking good. Dan? Solid. How about this level? Dan, yeah, right down. <laughs> Sorry, that was just a <laughs> We're joke. We're all Gucci. <laughs> Only four of us here today. Our, our friend Lehman is on an adventure. I heard he's avoiding the show because he, if I remember correctly, if it was the last show or two shows ago, he said that the over-under for Connor Brown's goals for the rest of the year was one and a half, and he chose the under. He did. So I feel like he's avoiding um, the spotlight right now. He's As he should. It. As he should. I don't know why he's such a hater. I said two and a half, and we're close. Oilers are <laughs> undefeated when Connor Brown scores. Thoughts? This is true. Connor Brown can only score in someone I read. Don't say today, it. But it was the tweet was like Connor Brown in the third period of a blowout game against an Eastern Conference team, and it was a highlight reel of Austin Matthews just like ripping bugs on, like skating around. It was very funny. Well, <laughs> this weekend, back to back revenge games for Connor Brown. Think Ooh, about it. I could see him going on. Think about it. One. First of all, he has to play. <laughs> I think he will. <laughs> just trying, yeah, like you Derek Ryan. Derek line. Ryan would be in there him after scoring his second goal. Well, no, because I mean we've been flipping those guys in and out. I mean he's a an in and out type of a Two player points. for the rest of the year. Win and you're in. Yeah, no, I think they stick with the same lineup. We got lots to talk about from last night's game, but first we're going to start off with a delicious debate. Our friends at Wendy's, of course, we're talking about Daily Face Off Survivor. That's where you go. You get a list of options. You got to pick one. Tyler, you still in? No, I was out day one this week. Not good. I think 76 people out of the 400 are still alive. One of them is Gavin. So shout out to Gavin. Gavin. Yep. He's still kicking. Good for him, Gavin. Yep. Every all-star needs a sidekick to support them, just like every Wendy's meal needs a six-piece nuggos. And right now, Wendy's is teaming up with Daily Face-Off Fantasy to bring you more weekly prizes like free nuggets, burgers, and more. So if you think you're an expert in all things hockey, it's time to prove it. And if you aren't already, start adding a six-piece to your Wendy's order for just three forty-nine. It's the dynamic duo even you never saw coming. Sign up at dailyfaceoffsurvivor.com. Get yourself some Wendy's. Kind of like Download the, the Wendy's app as well. Get some points right in the app for some free food as they well. They have great french fries. Yeah. I have been wanting a Frosty so bad all week that on my way home today, I'm grabbing one. On the way to Sherwood Ford or on the way back from Sherwood Ford? Ooh, new car, and then you get yourself It is a new car day for me. We'll talk about that later in Hot and Cold Performers. Good shout-out to our friends at Sherwood Ford the Giant. Delicious debate, though. Delicious debate. Tyler, what do you got for us? Has Troy Stetcher passed Cody Cece on the depth chart? If you look at the Oilers Nation comment section from last night's wrap-up, the answer is yes. Probably not a place you want to look is any type of comments. Why? <laughs> They're not good. <laughs> So They're you're scary. Rick, we love when people comment <laughs> and give us their feedback. Uh, I mean, I I know you guys, all three of you, probably have to dip in, or at some point in your careers here have had to dip in because you need you're supposed to like go back and forth to these people. I will barely dip a baby toe in that water. It's just it's not for me. It's not a place I would thrive. I used to have a big mod next to my name. You probably still do. People know that I'm a moderator. You probably still because I have that now. You On probably omnipotent still do. power. Yeah, you so can't. I am god of the <laughs> comment section. <laughs> when it's eventually time for Vinny to get back in the lineup, which there will, that time will come, are you sitting CC or are you sitting Stetcher? Okay, so first of all, I put Vinny back in tomorrow because I think we need that type of defensive you help. Go? Do you know? He was good. To He's go. listening his day to day. He so. was good to go a couple of games ago. That's right now, said. they're just they're just giving an extra time and you know let Stetcher play. There's set there's six guys or sorry seven guys right now that have to play. Uh, three of them are probably going to rotate in and out, so yeah, he'll get his in and out. But I th- see him playing on uh, on Saturday just because I think he's the second best defenseman we have, right handed wise. By the way, uh, so he's going to play, and then after that, I still roll Cody CC. I can see how they're comparable. I don't know if I've seen anything out of Stetcher, which we're only talking, what, two games now? Three games. Three games. He's only played three games. I haven't seen anything where you're like, yup, that guy's way better than that guy. He, he I do like the way better. he moves the puck. Yeah, he moves yeah, there's, the puck there's, well. definitely, there's definitely check marks in, like, yeah, he's better there, blah, blah, whatever. I just haven't seen, like, you just look at the player on the hole and go, yeah, that guy's way better than him. So I think you you might see CeCe come out again. Well, probably not against Ottawa either because he's played there too. So I don't really know when they do it. But you'll see CeCe come out, 
but I don't think it'll be right now. Do we think there's at all an opportunity to go 11-7? Are we past it? It's unnecessary now. Um, yeah, I don't love that. I, I feel like it was an experiment that... It was necessary because you had two defensemen at the time who yeah. you weren't sure could handle the minutes of the sixth guy when in, in Vin and Broberg. Vin, obviously, he won the spot. He won the, he won the minutes, and then Broberg kind of dwindled, dwindled away. But I think we did at the time because we had to. I don't think we have to now. I also just Sam Carrick, I think, is the fourth line center I like enough to keep there. That's I think the issue is is that we while you were you're right, Rick, it was helping the defense. It was also because our offense just we didn't have a fourth line that was worth icing every night. And I think that this team needs to have that. And I what I like about this debate of the Stetcher versus CC is that it shows that this team has some versatility in that in that bottom six pairing to be able to change up how the, the, the team is attacking on any given night. CC brings a different element than Stetcher did. Stetcher, last night, there was one play where him and Nurse were up on the rush and the defense and the, <laughs> they uh, the three forwards were two. playing defense. They're on a three like, on it, two. It, so, I mean, he just, he just brings a different element to the game. I don't think I want him in every day, though. I, I the interesting CC thing there. for me last night is that my boy Big Dave Quadrelli, he was supposed to be, supposed to be covering the Canucks game. But he was texting me about his love of Troy Stetcher all night long. And he goes, man, I told you this was going to happen. He always gets brought in as a depth piece. And then that motherfucker just works his way into an everyday player because of how hard he works. There's a lot of dog in that. There's a lot of fight in that dog. Kind of like more skilled Chris Russell. Mm. Does he block shots? I've seen him get in there a little bit. And just in the fact that he competes so hard. He right? does like compete hard. Chris Russell never gave up on a play. And that's no. what I like about Stetcher too is man, he's just a dog out there. Yeah. I, I so answer the question. I think this weekend you can justify taking CCL for a game. Which and game are you doing it? Second game against Ottawa. It's a little bit, if you want to handle Zero. him a little more delicately, maybe like a little bit more respect to the player, you don't want to be like, hey, healthy scratch. You just sit there and go, hey, second of back-to-backs, we just want to keep a set of fresh legs in there. So we're going to let Cody CC take a seat tonight. And we want to get Vinny some games because he missed last week. So like, there's your justification. Cody, everyone's going to be rotating in and out here down the stretch. Today's just your turn, second of back-to-backs on the road. So I would sit him on Sunday and play Stetcher, and I'd sit Stetcher Saturday against Toronto, though, and I'd flip-flop him. I think that this is a great problem. Unbelievable problem. Having guys you, fighting for do. spots is so great. And for a lot of us, like, I mean, Rick, how often were we talking like Decade of Darkness where there was no competition <laughs> for any spot, ever? Yeah, there was four guys in the lineup that you're like, well, I could rest all four of those guys, but no shit, I'm going to have two defensemen. Yeah. I ain't going to go very far. So I'd love to hear from you, Owen Radio Podcast. In, uh, hit us up. Should Stetcher swap in for CC or Vin, or how would you play it? And, hey, I mean, we have Stetcher on the right side. The depth the Oilers have when you consider Broberg as well, like that's why adding Stetcher was such an important layer. Let's say a worst-case scenario plays out in a playoff Stop series. This. No, no, Two we're guys not doing are this. hurt, right? Boom, you have Broberg and Stetcher who are both competent NHL defensemen that you can just elevate right into the lineup. Like, they have legitimate depth on the back end. Even if, you know, you'd probably love to see the or love to have seen them at a big top four piece, like a ten ever or whatever. It, it didn't end up working. It wasn't in the cards. Lehman said we have to move on from the I trade know, deadline. Sure. I am, but I'm just saying, like, as much as even the people <laughs> He's not who here, though. <laughs> love to see that, I think you should they still have to admit the Oilers now have some depth. The Stetcher edition was a good one for the price you had to pay. I want to ask a different question as part of this delicious debate. Our boy Dylan Holloway down in Bakersfield in the 10 games he's played, he's got five goals, four assists, nine points. Do you, do you see a path into the lineup for for Holloway, or is he just kind of he's kind of in limbo right now? I see a path in there just because I, I still think they would benefit from a little bit more speed in the bottom six, and I like him getting some confidence down in the minors and then just coming up with like three, four games to go and boom, trying to make an impact because, oh, whatever, you guys are going to roll your eyes and call me a Matias Yanmar cater. But, like, if you were to swap <laughs> Holloway and uh, Holloway and Yanmar, <gasps> some You're people just would... a Yanmar cater. But looking at that right there, do you not take 28 out first? Yeah, you could probably take Connor Brown out too. I'm just looking more for, like... Because 13 can both play both sides. Uh, Holloway can play center as well, and I think in the long run, they'd like to see him play center. You don't need him at center. Where's he playing? You don't Baker, need do him you know? at center, but you'd like to get him some some reps at center, right? Is that where he's playing in Bakersfield? I yeah. don't even know. Yeah, because I mean, you can have Carrick take the draw and then let him, and then make the swap after the draw. Could do that, uh, especially if draws on the right hand side, draws on the left hand. I think the long run they want Holloway as a centerman, so I think if you played him in there with Carrick and and Yanmark, 
all three of them can play essentially all three spots. But we agree Carrick should be in the lineup. <coughs> Carrick should stay just because he, he's so good with that right-hand side face-off, and he kills penalties. That's why, so, like, whether you take out Yanmark or Brown and put in Holloway, the nice part about adding both Henrique and Carrick at the deadline is you still have more than enough penalty killers on this lineup. You still have McLeod, yeah. Henrique, Carrick. You can use whichever one of Brown or Yanmark stays as your fourth. Nuge can kill penalties, and every once in a while, they'll throw dry saddle out there. So, like, you still have five to six penalty killers that you can use, which is good. Oh, yeah. Well, there's uh, swept the special teams battle last night against Buffalo. Killed off all three penalties they went, they've they faced. One for two on the PP. All around. Solid night. And the, that power play goal was a newer, I less utilized move, which really caught my eye, because that's on the opposite side of, the, of, they of where they normally the go. Side. If you just open up another portal for our power play to work, that's pretty dangerous. I thought it was interesting seeing Leon flip to the other side because now Connor's got a whole lot of room to roam on the other side. Nuge is a really good passer too. Mm -hmm. He hasn't got the goals that we want from him right now, but he's he's sneaky out there. And that pass to Leon was a perfect example of how that works. Yeah, no, I just... I, we all get a little upset or a little worried or a little whatever about our power play because it is like the, the Connor to Leon thing that we try for so often. But I mean, Toronto does it with Matthews and, and Washington has made a career out of it with Ovechkin. So it kind of gets frustrating when they go to it and it gets stopped. And then you see a different play that goes tic-tac-toe and into the net. You're like, oh my Lord, if they, have, if they have another tool, this power play... It only puts the, the defenders on their heels even more, right? You're watching the one play, and now you got to watch that play. Then, oh, shit, it could turn into this one. But then there's that other play they can do, and the boosh bomb from the point. Like it's, If they can just o o utilize another play on the power play, I think they're, it's really it's going to take it to another level. And it it's, has been great, but it's struggled this year from our eyes because of what we had to go through. Or Specifically got to on go the through road. Last year. Specifically on the road. They're like 35% at home. It's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> their home power play is unreal. Their road, there's like a 20% difference between the two. It's crazy. Um, but what I like about that, and this was a point that Aaron brought up today on Owen Every Day, but last time out against Buffalo, the power play was terrible. And they are in Buffalo a week ago or whatever it was, right? Power play did not work well at all. And then you look at last night, they totally threw a different look at the Sabres, yeah. and Buffalo couldn't handle it. And what's encouraging for from that perspective is going into a playoff series, the Oilers will need their power play to be good to win a playoff series. You can't throw the same look at a team six, seven games in a row. They will figure it out. And we've and played that team a lot of times, so they know yeah. what we're doing. Yeah, so like by moving Drysaddle over there, I just think it leaves the other team's penalty killers being like, whoa, wait. They're not doing what we just practiced for them to do. Yeah, yeah. Now what? And they're kind of scrambling. And then what it also allows you to do, I think, is at different points, say in a playoff series, when you go back to that look, you're almost catching them off guard, like you said, going back to your old reliable dry sidle in his office. So. To me, it's like adding another really effective pitch yep. in, uh, in yeah. a pitcher's arsenal. You know I mean? Like that cross ice pass to dry sidle, that's the Mariana Rivera cutter. That thing fucking yeah, that's rocks. The <laughs> Here it comes. Try but and hit it. And you there know it goes. what? Having a, having a big sweep and curve that does the same thing, that's real nice. There's some baseball analogies for you, Tyler. Yeah, opening day, just around the corner. I like how they waited till like the last 15, 18 games before they announced it to the world. Like, hey, guys, just so you know, we've been working on this since October. Old sneaky Glenn Gullitson. We've been doing this. Like, as soon as the, in his pocket. Once the, once the media <laughs> leaves after practice, the guys come back out on the ice. Now they're just in their track suits, and they're running around doing this thing, and the media's like... I just want to talk to Leon right now. Oh, I think he's in the shower. Just give him a minute. I'd like to talk to him in there, too. I like, uh, the, I like the little bit of fan fiction you just threw together there. Rick. It funny. was all real. In my mind, I've got my own fan fiction going on, but I'll save that for another podcast. <laughs> for a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter the promo code NATION25. That's 25% off, up to $10 value, and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter the co promo code NATION25. Don't forget, promo code NATION25 for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Offer valid in Canada. Subject to change. Terms do apply. It's been a couple of days, gentlemen, since our last podcast, so I want to what are you looking at, Tyler? You make me nervous when you do I'm that. Just, I'm keeping timestamps today because Lehman's not here. Okay. Lehman's gone. Lehman's gone, so Tyler is on the grind. I want you to think back. Since Tuesday, our last episode, for our friends at DoorDash, I want to know who delivered for you. Dan, I'm going to start down at the end of the line with you. Who you got? Who delivered for you? I'm going to take the easy one off the board, and it's going to go to the Viking. Uh, Matthias Ekholm's game yesterday 
was just, I don't know, like it just makes me so thankful for that transaction last season. Uh, he is he is a steadying force on this defense, and he has a punch of a shot that that you almost forget about because we're so used to seeing the boosh bomb. So Matias Ekholm last night delivered for me against the Buffalo Sabres. Ding dong. Um, There's Liam. That first goal he scored mm. was a beauty. And it was one of those goals where I wrote this in three key things at OilersNation.com. It was one of those goals where you go, this guy's got more offense in him than we even remember. Mm-hmm. Yet he's still at a half, like he's at a half point per game right now. You got a what little, a play. You got a little lucky that I went through the, the hole in the, the defenseman there, but that was a, that a shot was lucky. ridiculous. I think he pulled it and opened him up. That was a Well, he was down play. on one leg and it like went, th- yeah. not a very large hole. If he meant to put it through there, then good Lord. But that shot, when he got it off, dude, I'll tell you this right now. If you like watch him when he sla- takes slap shots, his clapper is one of the most violent clappers out there. Mm-hmm. And this thing, if it's not like in the net, it rattles. I'm surprised he hasn't broken glass yet. It's got to be frightening. If you're not, if you're like, elbow deep in your popcorn and you're not really paying attention that thing slaps you in the dude that's gonna scare the shit out of you that second goal he scored on the beautiful back pass by dry Settle, by the way unstoppable uka pack still doesn't know that thing went past him <laughs> that was it was wild man like to see him chipping in with the offense is great but also just the way him and bouchard like complement each other it's a legitimate top pairing man it's no more of this like oh god oilers blue line who do you send like no that is your number one duo and it's like a legit one i think it's Good enough to carry the Oilers on a playoff run. Looking back since our last episode on Tuesday, Tyler, for our friends at DoorDash, who delivered for you? Was that the quietest four-point game we've ever seen from someone? Totally. Like, Connor McDavid put up four assists in that <laughs> hockey game. Didn't have a shot attempt last night. <laughs> that, like, and he's still just, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll pick, <laughs> scoop up a couple of apples here, no problem. He now needs just 14 assists in his final 15 games to become the fourth player in NHL history to have a 100 assist season. Well, that's probably 14 assists in Three 13 games. to 14 games. If they sit him at the end? Probably-ish. Yeah, maybe rest him in one of those back to back. He's not going to like it, but I think we did last year where they took one game off. We did. What, really what was remember. that game we went to Vancouver? No Two one years played. ago, yeah. yeah. So I want to ask you guys a question that's coming in on the mailbag on Monday. Are enough people talking about, like everyone's talking about his goals being down? But I don't think enough people are talking about the assists he's putting in. Again, this would be the fourth time, fourth player in NHL history to do it. it depends Lemieux, on, Gretzky, or it depends on which people you're referring to. So the comment section, yeah, they're going to miss it all. But if you watch a lot of like the actual guys who get paid to like cover the NHL and stuff, they bring it up all the time. They're like, "Hey, Hart Trophy is this, that, blah, blah, blah," and they take a breath and, well, if Connor can get to 100, 100 assists, and then they break it down for you that way, and just it's something that's whatever, 14 times, 13 times ever by three players. I mean, 13 Wait, two times, d- 11 of them are Gretzky. Yeah, the amazing I mean, 11 yeah exactly, Gretzky. right? Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, the Gretzky, obviously, but what he's doing right now is on the same level as what he did last year in terms of points. I remember the Joe Thornton trade to San Jose, and I really thought that that was going to be, like, he was going to be the next guy to get that 100 points. He only got 92 assists that, that season that he Terrible. he got close to getting 100 assists. It really is truly something special that, like, even if you just take away the fact that Connor's assists are, what, like 70% first assists right now, it's something close to that number, uh, maybe 69, 68. Nice. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it, it's... It's astounding, and I think I'm, I think you're right, Rick. I think the people that are around the game are understanding it, but the casual fan, maybe not. To be fair, I don't think if up until this was a, a conversation this year, if you asked me how many or if it was that special of a thing to get 100 yep. assists, I probably would not have realized it was as exclusive as it is. Yeah, I wouldn't have said four, I don't think. I would have probably guessed like 10 people maybe had yeah, done it. Yeah, probably around yeah. there, so I really don't know, but... So I'm looking at Wayne Gretzky's stats right now. <laughs> Pretty normal. <laughs> yeah. Pretty average. They are fucking bananas. Yeah. In 1985-86, he had 163 assists. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Will anybody this year get 163 points? Not even close. No, 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 no. <laughs> and the other interesting thing about Gretzky is all 11 of those 100-plus assist seasons came in a row. I'm actually really con- I'm curious and uh, praying that he stays healthy and, and whatnot. But I think Connor's going to do some fucking weird shit like that. The, I've, I've said this a bunch of times, but like right now it's about Ovi and his goal race. 
the next big thing will be Connor McDavid. 2,000 points? Race to 2,000. I know he's not at 1,000 yet, but like. He's, I mean, like. I'm still not betting against him to do it this year. I need, he needs like 38 or something like yeah, that. Something like that. So it would be a it would be a grind. But if he doesn't get it this year, again, I'm not betting against him. It's coming in like game one or two. We're of getting it before year. Halloween. 38 and 15 <laughs> games would be what he needs. We're talking about how like 100 points is like a huge thing for somebody to do in an entire season. Gretzky was doing it when he got 120 points in the 81 82 season. He also scored 92 goals that year. <laughs> like was that scored, good when he scored when he had 163 assists in the 85 86 season he scored 52 goals that year a lot of empty netters like the, <laughs> I, dude i think the the year he did 50 and 39 goals. i think that was the year that lumley or something like that had like a 12 game he went into every game like trying to get lumley his goal first <laughs> yeah then is it like, okay we got that out of the way all right let me go pot three or Just four here insane. like the, the craziest thought still is like is the year of 50 and 39 when he was playing 39, 38, 30, 37, at the, at the end of the 37th game, he had 41 goals. Yeah, and he, he scored, scored nine goals in two games. <laughs> well, didn't he get he five scored five, in five against Philadelphia? Yeah. yeah. He called his dad. He told him. His dad was, like, what took so long? <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Rick, for our friends at DoorDash, we delivered for you. Wayne Gretzky. Uh, you know what? We got to give it <laughs> to really 90, did. 97's <laughs> running mate there. I think. And it's hard Zach not Hardy? to give it to Zach, so we'll give that one to you, but. Leon, like, uh, he, we see these little mistakes here and there, and we like to focus on them. But what that dude does out there, the intricacies out on the ice, he's still one of the best. And I know he's not where he was last year in points and whatnot, but I think the team is a lot better, and that's kind of why. But he's still, dude, I think he's still in the top five of the players in this world. In this when league, Leon's league on world. top of his game, which is more often than not, yeah, he's a warlord. Yeah, Try and fucking stop him. You luck. can't. Dude you is can't. so strong. There's like, so many plays, and they're just like what, those kind of throwaway plays. Maybe even they don't go anywhere where he just kind of one arm out and just tosses people off. Yeah, he just sticks his ass out a bit and throws it a little boxing out arm, and nobody can move. Like, you're not pushing around a 13 year old kid. Mm-mm. That is a 32 year old man who spent his entire life playing hockey, working on this type of stuff, and can probably do some ridiculous feats of strength on his own. And Leon just grabs them and like tosses them aside like a bag of potatoes. It's insane. For DoorDash, you guys left him for me, so I'm going to grab it. Zachary Martin Hyman. Last night, two goals, 48 on the year. It's kind of funny, actually. I'm looking at his stats right now. He's going for the Cy Young a little bit. He's got 48 goals and 19 assists. Um, he has the opportunity to do the funniest thing imaginable. And I, 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 I don't want to think about it too much. Don't want to jinx it. They asked him about it too, and you could I tell know, like, he I paused know. before his answer, and it was like, it would mean a lot to him, I think. I think, and you know 97's looking for him all day tomorrow. It's going to be, well, it's gonna be interesting. They're not exactly a defensive team. Yeah. They're not really known for being able to stop the other team's offensive players. He's going to have a very good opportunity of doing it. So well, I'm working on the, sorry, Dan, uh, I'm yeah. working on the GDB for tomorrow. Just kind of like getting the framework together. The last four games that the Leafs have played, all of them have been over seven goals. <laughs> Seems likely. Seems so, fair. yeah, I, I, my thing was McDavid's comments after the game. Like, you know, you asked Zach about it and yeah, sure. He's thought about it, but when your teammates are well, also say, something. I missed it. Connor, Connor was going to stay away from the question, and then he just went right into it. He's like, you know what? It probably is something that he's thinking about. And I, it, that tells me that the rest of the team is also thinking that way. So, yeah, look Zach Hyman's way for two goals. Guaranteed it's a conversation on the airplane right now. Come on. They've got the opportunity. <laughs> they're there, they're, 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 I'm sure like there's, a, couple, there's a couple attempts. guys in there who are like superstitious or whatever. They're like, I ain't going anywhere near this. But there's <laughs> other ones out there. Who have no issue saying sh- shoot or sorry shut out during a game? They're like, hey, how about you get it? To, what period do you think is gonna think it's gonna be a power play? How do you think the goal's gonna go? What do you think the crowd's gonna do? I'm Look gonna be insufferable <laughs> if well, any if there is, is anybody in a leaf jersey around me and that happens tomorrow, still over 24 hours away, I'm gonna be insufferable for these people. I I cannot wait. Do you think that that editor and Leaf is going to have to avoid guy, his Twitter you, for quite some time? Can you like, can you like put your Twitter ear ear on like rest for a week or so? Can you he's going to have to throw his phone into a lake. He's going to have like yeah. he's got a couple choices out there. 
Yeah. They like to talk about him. He's going to delete the app off his phone for a minute. That's what I would do. <laughs> you know? But I want to go back to Zach Hyman for a sec, just because his year is so outrageous. His last year in Toronto, mind you, he only played 43 games. That was the year he had a little bit of, he had those knee issues. 15 goals his last year in Toronto in 43 games. First year in Edmonton, 27 and 76. Then 36 and 79. They just played, or he just played his 66th game last night, 48 goals already. <laughs> I know you said knee issues, but it sounds like a skill issue. Mm-hmm. I think he was faking them so he could get out of there. <laughs> That's yep. what I'm saying. Skill issue between Toronto and Edmonton. Like, yep. These guys are not very good out here. I'd really like to go <laughs> west. I know they like had to try to spend money on their blue line and stuff, but man, just letting that they guy have it But though. Tyler, they had yeah. Michael Bunting. It's fine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then they lost him too. And now they, they have ha- Matthew Knees. It's fine. Like, Everything's fine. They've known for years, and we've had the same issues as them. Like, okay, defense, defense, whatever. We have done something on defense. Like, you, we got lucky with our seventh round pick, Vin turning what he is. They went out and they found Cece and say whatever you want about him. They went out and got Ekholm. Cool. You know, okay. Bouchard has been doing. What has fine really well? Yeah. Who does Toronto have for defensemen besides Morgan Riley and the old man from Calgary? Oh, uh, TJ Brody just Timothy. gets roasted by Leafs fans. I wasn't even referring to that old guy from Calgary. Mm-hmm. I was referring to the other one. Yeah, it's not great. It's hilarious. I don't know how they living experience. How have they, so they're a massive market, just like us. I'm People have to be saying, "Hey, guys, look at the defense. Look at the defense. Look at the defense. We have actually done stuff. They haven't yet. Yeah, Dubas is a god. Trey Living is the smartest gym in the world. And Ken Holland, he should go live under a rock for the rest of his life. Yeah, how well, was that a thing? The Dubas experiment ended pretty quickly. There, Trey Living coming in. I think he's done as good I mean, as look what he did with Calgary. What did he do with Calgary? He lost to well, Edmonton in the so playoffs. <laughs> he's done shit with Calgary. <laughs> I I still think the jury is out on on his decisions. I think Dubis is doing what Dubis do in Pittsburgh, um, but yeah, I don't know. It's Wearing a, his weird fake glasses. It's a decision. Anybody else? Just want to wrap up the who delivered segment for DoorDash. Anybody else stick out over the last couple of days? I thought Bush had a good defensive game yesterday. It was Ekholm's turn to be offensive, but I thought Boosh played uh, like a pretty mistake-free game. Shout out to Connor Brown for passing Yuri to Pita on the Oilers' all-time scoring list hmm. at two. Shout out Hold to on a second. Yuri to Pita only had one goal with us. Yes, he did. J- Jason Strudwick. He's tied now with Jason Strudwick for goal Dude, scoring. Yuri to Pita, like that year in the <laughs> Worlds, when he was really good for the Czech Republic, and he had never been in the NHL before, and teams were clamor over themselves trying to get him. He went to Philly. Let me tell you, Rick, I can list off some names that have one goal for the Edmonton Oilers. You oh, can please do. Uh, oh, I like that. We got Ray Whitney, Chris Vandeveld. Oh, Oilers great. Ray Whitney was an Oiler? Ray yeah. Whitney was an Oiler for they nine games. Uh, Nick Schultz at 128 games had one goal. Oh, the alter- That was the Gilbert for Schultz trade. Yep. Jim Playfair, of course, two Oiler games, one oh, goal for him. Last time ago. Uh, Alish Pisa yep. had six, a goal in 50 six games. Defenseman. Ryan O'Mara. Yep. Oh, part of this mini trade. Uh, <laughs> Brad trade. Malone, of course, only has one goal. Slater really? Cuckoo. I thought he had more than that. Yeah. Oh, Slater been. Cuckoo, Duncan Keith, Brad Hunt. Duncan, Duncan Keith, Keith only had one goal with yes, us? Yes, one goal and 20 assists with the Edmonton Oilers. How many 64, games? 64 total games wow. as an Edmonton Oiler. Roman Horak yeah. in Top. two games had one goal. Mm-hmm. Like weight trade, maybe? Uh, and Matt uh, Green. Roman Horak Matt was Green, like, another one. Wasn't that like the... Uh, Horak was the Perspaw deal, wasn't he? Yeah, I thought he was the Perspaw Oh, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Um, another guy that I want to give a little bit of love to, Adam Henrique. First goal as an Oiler the other day against Montreal. Parked himself in front of the net. Nice little tap in. Nice That's to see sick. the relief on his face. That ties in with Andreas Athanasiu for most goals in oh, Oilers history sense. at one. Andreas <laughs> from the Flames for Laddie Schmid and Olivier Wall. Yeah, Roman Horak. Yeah, I was thinking another guy that uh, was a Doug Waite trade. I think the German guy. Anyways, that that goal. For Henrique was ridiculous, mm. and I mean from the pass from Bush to, Ek, to Ekholm, and then right Ekholm like slot. seeing everything. I'm like, oh, I can fit that in there. And just whoosh. five points for Big Viking Daddy in the last two Dude. games. There's more offense in the big man than there than we thought. Eating up as the uh, as the playoffs right are on the horizon. The perfect eh? time. Hmm. Power of the beard. Hmm. Power of the beard. I saw a picture of him without a beard. I don't like it. Be He's got to keep that thing. You know. It's like the first time I saw you without a beard. Yeah, that was that's still weird, man. Yeah. When I met Rick, though, he had a bigger, oh, big, yeah. thick beard. <laughs> that's, that's my early memories of Rick. We're in the, we are officially in, like I, I think I said it last weekend, but I am officially in playoff beard mode. There'll oh. be no, so you can clean up the outsides, the top and the bottom. 
There'll be no losing length, though. We'll trim it up a little bit. And Tyler, you in? Uh, like, are you? So <laughs> I have you already started growing? Rich? Dan, you in? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I got cleaned <laughs> up last Thursday, and I, I told her, I was like, hey, listen, just so you know, we're starting the uh, we're starting the beard right now. Got I it. also shaved last Thursday, and this is what I got. So <laughs> I don't know. I, if, I don't know if we necessarily want me going down that path. I haven't shaved since the start of the season. And no, sure that's all. No, I, I just shaved this morning. <laughs> but but yes, I I uh, I think that the beards around this office are one of the funnier. I think he's got to let him fly. Absolutely, let fly. you can't. You Three can't. Three of you guys have rings on your girls' fingers, anyways. Yeah. They ain't going anywhere. It's true. I'm. I'll. I'll do it. I'm in. All. All together. We oh, can track the growth. It's I gonna love be it. slow. Three of us. Yeah. Who's the third? Liam. Liam. Oh, Lehman. Lehman's married. No. Is that what he's uh, doing this weekend? No. I just assumed. I guess. Lehman's getting engaged this <laughs> weekend. <laughs> oh, there's no. There's now that, now that's the bit about. No, me there's three get... office people because Zach and Coom. Yeah, Zach and Coom. That's yeah, what right. I was thinking of. Uh, but we can change the bit now. We yeah. change the bit. I'm off the hook. No more of like every vacation I go on, my DMs being flooded with it. Now Liam can take that off. So if you're listening take to this photo, right now, Photoshop his face. Put it out there. Please hit up Lehman's socials. Congratulations. Twitter, any of the 15 Instagram accounts he has. <laughs> Congratulate him on the Liam engagement. dot anything. You can just send yeah. it to any one of them and say <laughs> Liam dot engagement is this weekend's <laughs> oh Instagram yeah. account. Yeah, yeah, that's probably what he's doing. <laughs> just say congratulations, Liam. Congrats. On yeah, don't give any further context. That's yeah. very important. Just say congrats, Liam. Big weekend for you. Honestly, at the end of the day, it's going to prove whether or not he's listening to the show. He doesn't. Or you don't think he's also that, proved he's he might have YouTube, you muted. The YouTube's in the car right now. Did they drive out today? Uh, yeah, I think they're driving out today. I, he sometimes does. Will go. He will go back and listen to episodes. Really? Yeah. Good for him. Well, Lehman, congratulations on the engagement, man. I'm proud of you. <laughs> it's a big step for you. There's a lot of adulting, as we learned, is a... Oh, I hate that word. I know. That's why I said it. <laughs> I've been avoiding it for decades. Oh, I just hate when people are like, oh my God, I'm adulting today. And it's like... <laughs> Come on. Because you answered a, uh, a phone call without a name yeah. on your phone. You're like, ooh, oh, I'll answer it. Or they'll be like, oh, my God, I paid my bills today. Adulting. <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> you don't deserve praise for that. Society's fucked. So, congratulations what was alarm for? to Lehman. Sorry? What was that alarm for? Uh, I've got a meeting that I'm late for. Oh, that's fair. You know how it goes. <laughs> Tyler, could you get some betting we'll odds out for me while I read this here little plug? I got you. For our friends at Bet99, the number one online gaming experience in Canada, built by Canadians for Canadians, elevate your experience at Bet99. Experience same game parlays, player props, flash bet markets, fast payouts, and smooth transactions. Provided that you are 19 plus, can play responsibly, and you are not a person in Ontario, our friends at Bet99 have got everything you need. Tyler. Okay, first off, I just, I'm reading this email that we got about what they have going on uh, this weekend. Hit me. So it's $50 parlay insurance. So if you place a wager of $50 or more on the Toronto versus Edmonton game with minimum odds of minus 200, if the bet loses, you will get a $5 bonus bet for every point recorded by Connor McDavid in the hockey game. Oh, wow. <laughs> that sounds like fun. Basically free money. Basically. Um, but Can you respond to that email asking them to fix the logo they have for hockey? I just, I don't know. It looks more like a curling. You it sticks so well out there. Like it? Yeah, I just figure there's a better one. I mean, I've got a lot of, well, I used to have a lot of old hockey trophies we could go <laughs> off of. This one just looks weird. All right. Uh, we'll send that over. This for an Thank Oilers you. prop bet for the rest of the regular season, over under 106.5 points for the Oilers. To well, the odds, give it to you. So minus 140 for the over. So the over is pretty heavily favored here. They're at 88 right now. So they would need to get 19 points from now to the end of the year in their final 15 games. So basically, They'd have to go nine, five, and one. Over. That at nine, five, and one seems very attainable Over. considering they're humming at like a 760 some point Over. percentage since December. Give me the money. I will spend it this weekend. I like it. Fair. Yeah, I, I really, really like that one. Also, I also put a cheeky little bet on uh, Chris Knobloch for Jack Adams because the odds have improved at bet nine, nine to plus 8,000. Probably going to be Rick Tockett, but Frank made a great point. Well, listen, a little plus 8,000 if he wins it. That's I'm a 1,000 so, dare. How is it so out of the realm of possibility? This team, it, ever since he got here, we've been first in winning percentage, and we're in top three to five of pretty much every category. Yeah. So just because we were good last year? So since Knobloch took over, 
The Oilers have a points percentage of 745. Second place in the NHL is 700. There is not another gap or drop-off that significant. Uh, or the next one that would be significant is going from the Buffalo-Pittsburgh range to Ottawa. So 500 to 436. That's the next, like, really solid And I'm cool off. with talk at winning or whatever. But those odds for Knobloch, are, they're insulting. They're plus 8,000. Like, that's what that's I mean. Ridiculous. Like, I just threw a couple of, a couple of shekels like, on there. For for example, and I don't have a really good example, but let's sit, let's pretend the NFL was on and put together a parlay. Well, how big does your parlay have to be, and how reaching does it have to be in order to get to plus eight thousand? Yeah, I mean, you tell me. You're the one that it hits is those. large. I have hit no. I hit like you're the one that hits those. So you tell me. You've hit two hundred to one once, right? Yeah, I forget what the numbers were. <laughs> well, it was You've done that twice, though. Yeah, I did. I had, I had two for thirty seven hundred. I love it. Twenty five <laughs> into thirty seven hundred both times. <laughs> so yeah, that is. <laughs> Hundred and some to one. I'm not good enough at math. Me uh, Oilers' <laughs> odds to win the Pacific Division have actually dropped a little. They were 280 last time we spoke, I believe. They're now plus 305. So there's a couple of betting odds outside of hockey. How's everyone's March Madness brackets doing? First time in 20 years, I haven't officially put one together I'm myself. Really glad you asked me this. But it is uh, apparently a massacre out there for everyone. Well, not I, everyone. Uh, I don't think mine's doing very well. I, the approach I took was, who had the coolest mascots? Told way to do it. BYU, with their cocaine cougar looking guy, allegedly in my opinion. I had them going way further because head-to-head mascot-wise, there was no contest. And then they got bumped out by whoever. <laughs> Ruined my whole bracket. BYU? Duquesne. Yeah, Duquesne. That's it. Duquesne. I, right, for du- the record, Chesney. had Duquesne to win that game. Kenny Chesney's. I'm not going to say it's because I know anything. It's because I got lucky. So we did a bracket challenge over with the Real Life Podcast. Got a bunch of nation citizens to to come in the mix as well. 59 total brackets for our listeners. There is currently a three-way tie at the top. Jason Savvy, Oilers Adam, and Mainlander Tim. How many? They've correctly picked 16 games so far. That's up to today? Correct pick. CPK, yeah. 16. Wow, good for that. How many people are in this pool? Because I feel like I'm dead last. 59. Oh, second last. I'm 47. <laughs> I'm also not doing good. <laughs> that is incredible. And that's why I stopped. After 16. 20 years, <laughs> I took a break. Took a day there's off. 16 games yesterday, and there's been three today so far? That's three finished? Or four finished today. So there's 16 and f- That's impressive. 16 and four. It's not bad. I think, Dan, I don't think I'm going to win this one. Don't like your chances on that? <laughs> oh, I take it back. I also have Come 16. from behind victories, not available? <laughs> I just need Purdue to go all the way and win this thing, and then I might have a chance. And all the other teams drop out. Because they've got two mascots. So, like, how could I not pick them? Oh, that's the, yeah, they're loaded up. You know what One I mean? of them is a boiler, and the other one's a maker? 16. The one's like a car or something, and then uh-huh. one's the guy with the hard hat. We're doing oh, okay. well over here. You know what I mean? Like our anyway. rig worker on our old lose one, shoulder yoke. You're about to lose a matchup? Yeah. What's the deal with all these kids wearing T-shirts under their basketball jerseys? I don't know. Some of these boys are big fellas. Like, I'd be, like, showing those guns off, dude. That's all I was saying. That's all I was saying. Like, that big... Oh, I don't even know what two he played for last night. Um, Maybe... Ah, I forget. It's a red team. But there's a big fella there playing last night. That was... He's the one that gave him ice cream after the game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, my final four is still intact. That's all I care about. I'm in last in like a couple of the brackets that I paid to be in, but as long as your <laughs> final four is still intact, it's true. These early stages really don't matter. You just well, you can come back, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you can come back late as a couple other top seeds get knocked out. Yeah. Well, I uh, wish you well, Tyler. Thank you. Shout out to Bet Nine Nine. I was live betting a little yesterday on Bet Nine Nine, and it was working out pretty nicely. I don't even know how to bet on. Like I was watching you guys watch basketball. I was watching them watch. I don't even know what I'm. It's I don't just know what's going on. When there's like ten minutes left, or like right before the second half, you just like live bet the over if you're with your buddies, and then like you're sweating every bucket. You're doing the math on what the pace is. It's a good time. So I, uh, I have issues. <laughs> okay. If the game's a little too close, I probably won't watch. Then I'll go back and like, oh, I'm up by like six. The other team scores a three. Bang, change channel again. Jeez. So there's been there's probably four probably s- between now and the beginning of yesterday. There's probably like four games where I had a pick out there that was getting close and i wouldn't watch because every time i watch other team scores and we wouldn't score and then i was like hey flip it a couple of things i want to get to before we get to ask the idiots last night ryan mcleod beauty goal last night nice shot Loved hell of a shot career high in goals for our boy ryan mcleod picked mm. up his 12th i still think there's 20 goals in him there is maybe not this year 
but there's 20 goals in him. What is he, 23? Yeah. He's one young. Like it's one of those things where, like, this is a thing to tie it to another sport uh, with the Blue Jays and Danny Jansen. Just because he made the team so young and he, like, feels like a veteran that you forget he's still relatively young. And with McLeod, like, because he's been on the team now for he's a child. parts of four seasons. Like, he made his debut in 2020, 21. It's crazy to forget he's only 24. He's a child. Like, he is not in his prime yet whatsoever. No. There is room for him to grow. He's significantly younger than you. He is. He, he's still, he still has to put on some LBs. Yeah. Yeah, a couple of LBs will do he's him some good. He's 6'3". Like, when that guy, if he can put on a little bit of that yeah, man yeah. body weight. I'd like, also like him to strap himself to Leon in the sense that, like, getting more to the harder areas. Leon's so good at it. Teaching him to defend the puck a little bit more. Also, for Ryan McLeod, like, he ripped that shot. It was a beauty. Mm -hmm. I want to just, like, sit there and peel his eyes open and make him watch it 30 times. Like, <laughs> Look what you can do. Because he's the king of taking the puck behind the net or forcing a pass. Or addition it across, there. a two-on-one addition yeah. across. Yeah, and it's like, dude, you can shoot. Because he, so he was the two-on-one with Cody Cece. Yeah, he was. When... I don't know what defenseman that was, but that dude was not paying attention. He was looking at a pretty girl in the stands because Clowder's coming down, and he's like, da, 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 and turns the opposite way, and Clowder's goes right, excuse me, then I'll just go right past you here. Uh, but I was so it's happy he shot that, that and did not try and fucking feather one to Kaner for his goal. Oh, and that was, like, that was like Connor's, that little backhand forehand around the goaltender. I saw that play happening. I was like, oh, he's going to flood this across and try and give it to Kane for a tap-in. He looked over there. He's like, no, I'll just do it myself. <laughs> that goal just. Dude, I swear every game team. this year, he would have tried to give it to whoever was in front of that, especially somebody who's gone 14, 15 games without scoring a goal. In yep. Kane. yep. The other thing I want to touch on is he takes so much shit in this market. And that's why I have to give Darnell there some love. He ended up with the game winner last night, seeing I Rister from the point, made his way through traffic. First assist by Troy Stetcher also. Three goals in his last five games from Darnell Nurse. Love it. Tell me this team is not coming together right now. They're playing good hockey at the right time. They're not even playing as well as they can. I sat That's there, and I'm right there with Connor's comment last night of, like, we're finding ways to win. That's dope. Love it. Still trying to find their game. Still got to, like, find a way to control the game. Yeah, and I like that. I'm... I have watched the Tampa Bay Lightning, the Boston Bruins, the Toronto Maple Leafs, the Pittsburgh Penguins all figure it out in the regular season, and then and then they click, and they were smashing teams oh, and walking over teams, it's and then right the playoffs the come, the game or something and everything like that, changes. Or after after yeah. we score a goal, yeah, because we took a penalty right after a goal there, yeah. and I was so angry that you guys get on your toes, score a goal. Yeah. I don't know if you want to play the same line or change up lines, whatever. That's up to the coaches. But I need guys on their toes, and we're even playing that, and we're going north. Like, we're going that way and only that way. That's what we want to do. Get the puck out of our angle this way, because it's like we score a goal, and we go flat-footed, and there's one, two passes around us, and then we're scrambling our own end for the next 35 seconds. I just like the idea or the mentality of this team that they can just turn it on, and they can just have that conversation <laughs> in the have locker third room period like they did. And, and massacre a team like that. We need that. But we need to start that at the start of game one. Yeah, play that game third one, period of the one. first period. Yeah, and just exactly. Like coast your way through the last yeah. 40 minutes. Yep. Spec made that, I think, made a good point on Twitter along those lines of, like, n no team is going to go out there and just dominate every single hockey game. But yep. it is a good skill for a group to have. And I'm paraphrasing a bit here of, okay, this game isn't going our way. And snap, we took it over. <laughs> and, like, when, you're tr when your best 20 minutes is as good as the Oilers' best 20 minutes can be, you don't have to have your A-plus effort mm -hmm. every night. You just have to have one A-plus stretch of, like, 12 minutes, and you can score three or four goals. And before anyone goes, oh, you just beat Buffalo, and Buffalo's out of the playoffs, and blah, 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 their goaltender has been the best goaltender in the league for the last three months. It's Christmas. He was really pissing me off in the first period, too. I'll tell you that. Much. It was, And you know what? In the first period, we were not great in our own end. We were playing kind of flat-footed. We still had four or five good chances. That's the score. Another thing I just want to t touch on is I really like this quote from Corey Perry before That's yesterday's game. Gorgeous, I loved it. I'm just gonna the the first part of it is what I care about is he was kind of asked about like line combos and where he's playing up and down the lineup, all that stuff. And his quote, and I quote, "You check your ego at the door. It doesn't matter where you play or how much you play, as long as the team is winning." And I think like a guy like Perry, who's won our trophy winner. He's been everywhere and done everything. He's got over a thousand games, all that stuff. I like hearing that kind of stuff from those guys. People are gonna hate this. 
But this is exactly what I said when we brought in a guy like Duncan Keith. Like, I know the cost or whatever. This is the stuff they do in the dressing room that you can't measure, you don't hear, we don't see. That is actually extremely tense. Like, it's very, very important. Because don't you feel like Corey Perry, if people are like, he's one that will call you out for it? So is everyone, are we talking about one player specifically? No, no, I just think like in well, general. Well, I think there's, there's one player specifically on this team who probably... Probably people are thinking about. Yeah, so you think a guy, and, he, and, he's, in a, and he's struggling right now, so you can see a guy like Kane, and they, everyone brings, oh, put, they put him on the third line back with Woody or whatever the hell it was. He can't get angry. Like, you can like sit there and mope all, all you want, and then a Stanley Cup champion, a 50-goal scorer, sits there and goes, hey, listen, we're doing this for the team. Like, I, you can't continue that. And no, I'm not saying he's been doing that. But you can see that you, how, how, do you, how do you like be that, that guy? Room. Dude, I'd re-sign him right now. I wonder if they will. I wonder what that would look like. One mil probably, right? Yeah, it's no just like yes. you want Unless he goes chasing the bag again in Chicago where they pay him four. You know, I mean, like a team like that. I just don't think there's a... Uh, there's, there can't be fun in playing like that at his age with his resume. Unless you do the Troy Stetcher, right? Where he goes back to Arizona every summer yeah. and then gets <laughs> traded to a contender at the deadline. That seems sweet. That is an <laughs> unbelievable setup. That dude's gamed the system so hard. It's like, oh, I'm going to play like stress-free hockey for four months in Arizona, get some money, and then deadline, Bill Armstrong will come and be like, oh, best of luck, Troy. We'll see you in three months at the negotiating table. <laughs> see you guys. Yeah, Peace. See you. But, I mean... We forget that Corey Perry is less than a year away from signing a deal to just come in and kind of usher Connor Bedard into the league and and lead him, you know, into the into what is going to be a, a media frame. You got to find the fountain of youth, of youth, fountain of youth. The thing with I like about Perry and everything, the boots aren't there. They're not what they used to be. Never really the, had the boots, head though. and the hands are. Dude, that was my favorite penalty of all year. Well, his one last night. Well, that was, was his asshole Corey like Perry play. What a dive though. That's just I I love that. Like I get it. You don't want to take penalties and as a third and blah blah blah. That actually brings me up one but thing. Chop him on the foot when he's coming by. Right. That's on the what laces. it's like to play against Corey Perry. That is not fucking fun. You know what I don't like though? So tweeting in real time sometimes is very annoying. Yeah. Cause like I go, ah, I don't like that penalty by Perry. And then I see the the replay, I'm like, oh, what a dive. Yeah. But anybody only sees the first one that I'm watching real time before the replay yeah, comes. Just, yeah. like, oh, it's a dive, you idiot. I'm like, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> like, wh- I, I don't remember if it was that penalty or a different one where so the refs called the Oilers on a penalty. They're going to go to the box. And J.J. Paterka just also went to the box. Yeah. And like <laughs> all the way to the point he sat in the penalty box. And the yeah, ref had to be like, it was a hook or something like that. Yeah. And then Louis like, well, maybe they gave him both. Maybe he got one for uh, embellishing. For, for embellishing. And then <laughs> Jack like, said that Dalene came over and told him to get yeah, out of the box. like, what are you doing? <laughs> we have JJ, <laughs> Paterka's just sitting there like, what? No. I remember oh, I'll leave that. when I was like 15 or 16, we were playing in a minor hockey playoff game. And the other team scored. And it like went over the line. But we pulled it off quick enough. And the refs were sitting there, whatever, talking, and it's quiet in the rink. And we have one guy on our team, a defenseman, who just out loud goes, that was in, hey? Like, <laughs> that that went in. And we were like, shut the hell? What is wrong? Well, what's going on with you? He's like, well, no. Like, it went in. I saw it. And we we're like, why are you saying this right now? <laughs> shut up. There ain't no replays in beer league, my boy. Look, yeah. if, you go, if you go into the penalty box where you're not supposed to be there, you should have to stay there for 12 seconds. Yep. Yeah, you should have to start the play there. Yeah, 100%. As soon as the puck drops. Like, yeah, they'll open the door for you. <laughs> even the guy, even the old guy in the box is like, dude, why are you sitting there? So funny. I wasn't trying to translate it on the broadcast. That's funny. <laughs> oh, they, they brought it up. Tyler, what are you doing on May 31st? Oh, I think I know what I might be doing. Are you going to the Snow Valley Aerial Park? You're damn right. Family fun all summer long. Attractions include the Aerial Tower, which is great, by the way. If you've never gone to it, we went a handful of years ago. It was very, very fun. Waz goes every six weeks. Mm-hmm. White Mud Creek Mining Company. Target Golf. Again, I'm excited about that one. The all-new Mini Golf. Creekside Eats will be open for snacks and refreshments. Or you want to do a little camping? Opening May 15th this summer. Take advantage of over 60 sites and three comfort camping domes right here in the city at Rainbow Valley Campground. You want to book a spot? Rainbow-Valley.com. Let's do a little camping. It'd be fun. We were talking about this on Real Life. Get a bunch of buddies, even like, you know, if we're from out of Edmonton. Go to the Rainbow Valley Campground, so you're in the city, and then, like, set up, like, a projector screen and, like, watch the game there. That'd be great. I also just think it would be great to just do, like, a little staycation for a weekend where you go down, do a little camping, go yeah. do some golf, some aerial park. All of a sudden, you're Why having not? yourself an enjoyable little Saturday, Sunday. Be gorgeous. Lovely. I love summer. A little Edmonton. wiener roast, perhaps? Oh, come on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Come on. Gentlemen, I've got three questions for Ask the Idiots this week. 
Um, only one hockey one, so that's excellent. I like that. <laughs> This one comes from blue and orange in my veins, Dan. I got this question from better late than never. I admit it. I'm stealing your question, but I want to know what everyone's guilty pleasure snack is. Mine is butter bread with some brown sugar on it. I used to eat it all the time as a kid, and I still do as an adult. Guilty pleasure snacks. Mine is uh, a pregnant, uh, apparently a pregnant stand-up buy that everybody has when they're pregnant uh, is pickles with peanut butter. I like peanut butter on my pickles. I like both of those things. I don't know if I want them at the same time. I'll try it, though. Yeah. Give it what a kind shot. of peanut butter? Crunchy or so smooth? Uh, smooth. Usually okay. smooth. I like the I like the uh, the stuff with the oil that you have to mix in, but I'm cheap. Alan. So. Adams. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Adams. Tyler, what do you got? A guilty pleasure snack. I will sit and eat candy until my mouth is, like, I am, too. Apart. I will do the same like thing. Like, if... I have to, like, go put the bag in the cupboard and then, like, come back and sit down and, like, keep playing video games or whatever I'm doing. Because if it's there, it's just nonstop. The other day, woke up in the morning, forgot I had a bag of candy from the night before next to the couch, and there was just two left in there. It was, like, 745 in the morning. I was like, don't mind if I do. A couple of Haribo Twin Snakes. Pop those in for breakfast. <laughs> you and I also share a love of Sour Patch Kids. There's a lot of Sour Patch Kids that go on in the Castle Milk. Yeah. Okay. Rick, what do you got? See, I probably have a couple. I, I can't, like, uh, crack a bag of Doritos. I'm Murder in trouble. Thing. I love to get a couple scoops of Family ice cream bag? in, yeah, if I have to. But I, uh, my question is, because I do have one more. Um, he said toast, butter, brown, brown sugar. sugar. Yep. That's two of the th- Like, I know that, but I knew toast, butter, and then a sugar cinnamon inside of a white uh, shaker that you put on top. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah that was a nice one. But then I'm also like late night um, cinnamon raisin bread with butter or bagel, whatever. Oh, that's mm. lovely. Cinnamon raisin. Love it. I've got so many. I'm a trash pit. I love crunching up ramen that are un- uncooked. Oh, I haven't done that like since that. elementary. I used to kill those things. I though. still do it. But now I've leveled up my ramen so I get like the legit ones, not just the Mr. Noodle. Even better. I will eat raw hot dogs like crazy. Cheese was on the. It's just like rolled bologna. I yeah, will crush that. Yeah. Um, me misses hates when I do it, but like deli meat, I'll just eat right out of the package. Dude, I walked in here today and they have those things from last night out there. Those charcuterie, well, call them charcuteries. And yeah. I was like, oh, don't eat them there from last night. What the hell's that mean? On the counter for like over twelve hours, Rick. Yeah, what is it? Some 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 salami and some cheese. I told him I walked how around with like pocket cheese for like six hours. It was great, Tyler. How else do you get culture inside your body? Come on. You had to improve that. <laughs> that shit's somehow. got at least two days fucking stay power. I felt like sixteen <laughs> plus hours was a. Oh, lot. that's well into the fifties before I'd be worried about it. <laughs> Cheese is just basically fungus, anyways. It's yeah, fine. it's good. Come Mold. on, Tyler, get on board. Sorry, guys. Any other nice guilty pleasure snacks coming to mind, gentlemen? Pocket cheese. Pocket cheese always. Ketchup chips. Love a good bag of chips. I will crush chips. Up. any chip that's in front of me. I will crush them yeah. all. Well, I suggest you go try the new ones. They're called Havoc. They're like a Dorito type of thing. Oh, okay. Bulgogi was good. Hold Ooh. on, though. Smoked nacho cheese was good. Smoked nacho cheese is like little twists. Did listeners catch Tyler going, you, I to don't ketchup, ketchup chips? Ooh. You, though? Oh, you. It's a Good new. for you. I, wow. So I have like a very strong repulsion to like vinegar. Vinegar flavor, yeah. So like uh, salt and vinegar chips. <laughs> Not just even like a Miss Vicky's, the you? nice crunchy salt oh, and vinegar. Oh, yeah, it's just too like, Too strong, like punches your nostrils kind of yeah, thing? And yeah, and it just immediately makes me feel gross. So mm. I discount your opinion on all chip-related items because you like barbecue. Dude, fries mm. and some vinegar is dope. Ooh, oh, it's fantastic. I, a, I used to have a boss who loved doing that and it would just be like, oh. Cool. Fish that reminds me, popcorn, freshly popped popcorn in the whirly pop on the stove uh, with a little bit of vinegar, white vinegar dabbled on. Lovely. My brother does yeah. that. <laughs> Tyler's My brother does that all the time. <laughs> Tyler's <laughs> disgusted. Love food <laughs> talk. And since is a, uh, since you stole the question from Better Late Than Never, I am also, I'll just like pour cereal in a cup and I'll just eat it with no milk. That's not bad. Yeah, a little dry cereal. Pickled eggs. I love a pickled egg. So do I. There's a wholesale place on 111, <laughs> like I think, space. that was there. There was like $33 for a jar. I'm sure you got a good 36 pickles in there. I damn near bought it. I would have taken up half my fridge. Ooh, pistachios. You feel guilty because of how much they cost. Yeah, yes, but it's a fair. great snack. I love eating your pistachios. You have been doing that, yeah. But I got the <laughs> $20 bag free. at Costco, and I'll just say it. I think I got about $80 worth of value and pleasure out of that. <laughs> I would agree that I probably got the price of a normal bag of pistachios <laughs> worth of pleasure out of your pistachios. <laughs> I love ma- Tyler's math c- calculations on the pleasure value. There's, 
there's a bird on TikTok, and he's famous for his owners will put something in front of him, and he'll tap it with his beak and then say what it is. So they'll put like a cup. Oh he'll yeah, hit I it see with him. his beak and he'll go glass. Yeah, paper rock. <laughs> and then whenever he gets a couple in a row right, they go, "You want a treat?" And he goes, "Pistache, pistache." <laughs> so I would literally just walk around my house so as if my pistache is just being like pistache. pistache. <laughs> my favorite TikTok bird is that seagull the English guy trained yeah. over the last four years that just comes to his window and eats salmon. It's the best. Oh yeah, ah uh, yeah, he has a pet seagull. Stephen, like, yeah, it's the same. Stephen seagull the that seagull keeps coming back. Yeah, Stephen comes back Steven. even if he migrates. Stephen seagull. On back. Yeah. Hey. Mm-hmm. See. Goal. Tyler, you're up next. We got a little hockey question for you. Wow. This one comes in from Devin. The NHL is discussing discussing new review rules for coaches. Yeah. But I want to know what you would like to see as a reviewable play that is currently not. What would I like to see as a reviewable play that's currently not? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the puck over glass one is actually fine. And I'm happy they're doing that one, but I like that it comes with the punishment of, like, if you're wrong, get ready to kill a two-minute five-on-three power play. Like, you need to be right. So I'll say there's not any one particular play that I'm looking at going, I wish they could review that. But I will add, I'm all for stiffer punishments for being wrong. I think that's a really important wrinkle to all this. Like, the refs have a very tough job seeing this stuff in real time. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to say, you got that call wrong, you need to be adamant and 100% sure. Dan or Rick, anything coming that you'd like to see reviewable? I just, I I want to see a general review booth accessible to the referees anytime they have a question about something. I would like the referees to be able to make a hand signal that allows the Toronto office to, to know that they're going to be coming and having a question about the play so they can have it all queued up and ready to go. I want the referees to have all the tools available to them anytime they want them. Yeah, I'm not so sure there's a coach challenge out there that I'm uh, too worried about. I mean, the high stick, they kind of do on their own. The puck over glass is, I mean, with today's cameras and stuff, I don't. I think it's so damn hard to try and figure it out one way or another, so I don't think I'd really use it if I was the coach. But I do agree with Dan there. I'd like to see, like, the booth. I'd like to see Toronto, like, make the decision and just call down quick or something like that. I just find it, these guys are going back and watching on a screen smaller than, than his laptop right now. And they have to call against themselves. Yeah, like there's there's an ego, th- like like it or not, this is they're just they're human people. beings. There's he, there's egos involved here. People. You'd be hard pressed to like say <laughs> like, oh, sorry guys, I fucked up here. Blah, here's the call. Here's the real call. Let someone else do it for you. Take it out of your hands mm-hmm. and just move on because there is negative feelings between teams and, co- and refs and players or refs and coaches or whatever. I just want that removed. Have it done. Have it done quickly and just get it out of the way. I don't really have any. The only thing I could say is I think it would be fun if coaches could review penalties. And the reason I say, sometimes they're just like egregious misses and that would be interesting to review. But if you're wrong, you're down five on three. I, I would be too. Cause I mean that clouder tripping from behind the net, the other game where he just moved the puck and the dude fell. Is, I think that would be that an interesting challenge if it was available to coaches. But like Tyler said, you better be right or you're going down five on three. I also, Rod, Br- it's so far down the line from happening. Rod I, had I hate saying nice things about this organization yeah. or that player, but I agree with what you were say. Yeah, like the idea of you actually don't need two refs on the ice anymore. Like the linesmen break up fights, refs skate so well now. There would be more value in having a ref in the sky in a state-of-the-art mm review booth where they got a technician who can easily flip between angles so like ref throws up his arm for a trip on the ice and then that ref upstairs just immediately goes show me that show me the the right angle on that and then he can just even buzz down to the ref okay not a penalty just puts his arm down you can't or, put your arm down though because the goalie's out of the net oh yeah, you're so right. you'd yeah. have to like yeah. end the play yeah, whatever yeah. dead and say face offs coming outside it's not a penalty you got to figure that part out but yes rick talk it um qua- i was talking to my boy big dave um, the other day, and Rick Talkett actually had some interesting ones about the rule changes when he was asked about it, and his problem that I agree with is the flopping in the NHL now. He would love to see that punishable by double minors. Like, if you're diving or snapping your head back to try and fish for a penalty, I thought that was hilarious, because there's a lot of, I'm just saying younger players now that flop, they turn their backs towards guys, get leveled. We've like talked about in the last couple of shows, yeah. That stuff, 
That would be an interesting review. I would like to see them get a little heavier on the embellishment again. They were for a while. They'll do this all the time. Okay, this is what we're calling this year. And they'll talk about it in September and October. And for October and November, you're like, oh, shit. Like you talk about the Corey By Perry By January, one. and it's all gone, right? The Corey Perry one. Hack on the... Uh, I know that does not feel good to get slashed on the top of the foot. But that guy went down like there was a sniper in the second deck. Yeah, exactly. Was it, was it 2018 or 2017? I feel like it wasn't too long before the, the world shut down in 2020 that the league was talking about announcing all of the embellishment. Well, they had like fines, fines yeah. and if you have two of them and this happens and, and three and that happens. It feels and like the PA just kind of got that to go away pretty quick. Yeah. I think too many people want one color or the other, but there can be a trip. Of course there can. And a dive at the same time. And that's and that's where or soccer players and, at the same time. and that's where football players always kind of complain about you know the need for embellishment because the referees aren't catching the play in the moment and so if they go down and they extra emphasize it the referees might see them. You want to know a great story? Just it's sort of not really embellishment or whatever, but on the line of penalties. I went the other day, bought myself a brand new stick for beer league playoffs. Who's went that? to the Oilers store. It's a Noel Hoffenmeyer. <laughs> it's great. Sick. You're First still game, I'm behind the net, and this D-man on the team we're playing, he's just an asshole. Sometimes when we play this team, he shoots pucks at me intentionally when he ices them. <laughs> he comes and just two-hand over the top slams down on me, and I stick blade goes flying. He listens to the show. And I go, I literally was about to see Red and lose my shit. I'm like, first game with this new stick, and this asshole's the one. This is my who, Hoffenmeyer. Who comes over the top and does it. And then I kind of blink. Oh, he slashed me so hard, he snapped his stick. Oh, your s- your stick stayed apart, and I stayed perfectly intact. Karma, you little asshole. Enjoy spending two hundred bucks. That dude listens to this show because if he went over there and slapped and slashed you that hard, he knew damn well that was the stick you were talking about picking up that day. Mm-hmm. But he broke his stick, so <laughs> suck it. I like that people dislike your takes so much that they take it out on you and beer league. <laughs> yeah, it's great. What a world. Like, he said this is the twelve sixty days. Had a, I've had a game where it gets heated, and you sit in the penalty box, and the guy goes. No one even listens to your fucking podcast. <laughs> it's like, well, well, you clearly know. Like, I don't have my name on the back of my jersey. Actually, so like, last time I looked, this is how many downloads before the last show. Yeah. Yeah, we had a lot of downloads on this weird <laughs> show that we do here. But it was funny, the karma of, like, you tried to break my new stick. You broke your stick. We're again close to the end of the podcast, but I want to talk about another interesting story that came out yesterday. The Edmonton Oilers have signed forward James Steffen to a three-year entry-level contract. The right winger has scored 48 goals and 51 assists in 64 games in the dub this past season. Now, you might think to yourself, hmm, that last name sounds familiar. I wonder why. I can't believe you signed here. It's wild. I, I don't know why. Like, I don't know who your agent is, but you need to find a new one because your agent allowed you to go to this team where all you're going to hear is shoot on an empty net. Or they're going to reference his dad missing the empty net for, like, until the day he gets traded or leaves or whatever, retires as an oiler. Poor guy's going to have to listen. I don't know how he's going to deal with it. He's going to need, hey. like, therapy. It's going to be so over the top. Everything is wrestling, Rick. It's, uh, it's Dude, a part so of the story. He's like, I used to work in a restaurant where, you, like, yeah. one, of the, one of the, you know, with your sandwich, you got to fry. Like, baked beans is always an option, right? Every time you say, okay, what do you want? This is uh, baked beans. Someone always makes the fucking fart joke, right? Something like yeah. that. <sighs> yeah, no, first time I heard that one, you move on to the next guy. Yeah. This dude is going to go through the same thing for so long. I feel terrible for him. Counterpoint. Yep. You know how there's that theory. I said this on Real Life about something else the other day. Uh, Disney put out the movie Frozen. So when people search Walt Disney Frozen, oh, Jesus. that comes up. Yeah. Not Google's about <laughs> Walt Disney being frozen cryogenically. Same thing with Taylor Swift going to a Jets game. So when people search Taylor Swift Jets for a while, not about her private Jets. Now, when people search Stefan Oilers, they're going to get the, the kid. Dad's highlight won't be all there. Right, be the all kid. right, all right, all right. He's I doing see his it. dad a solid. Look at it's that. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. Good for him. The long con. What a heart on this kid. Had a baby Stephen just. Goal <laughs> Oilers. So now, when he scores his first NHL goal, it's going to be all about that. Oh. Dad's on the second page of the if Google sheet. Now. Or Good I can see it. First game is an Oiler. Pops that empty netter. Place goes bananas say. like it's a Connor Brown first goal of the season. <laughs> you know, I can see oh. it coming. I can see it coming. Gentlemen, let's wrap up the podcast. A little hot, cold performers. I'm going to talk about nationgear.ca. We got a plenty of new designs up there. We've got the Robin Brownlee auction just wrapping up here in a couple hours. So I just want to say current high bid is $625 to spend a day with the Oilers Nation Everyday Boys. You get to be on the show. You get to host. Kick Tyler out of the chair. You sit down in there and you just host the show for an hour. That, that's what's working, isn't it? At, right, at this moment right now, there's only two hours left in the bid. So by the time you listen to this, 
probably over. Chances are it'll be over, but you can still head on over to nationgear.ca, get yourself a hat, get yourself a hoodie, beautify your body. Playoffs are coming up. You need some new threads in your wardrobe. Gentlemen, as we do every week, we're going to start off with our veggies. We're going to do cold performance of the week for nationgear.ca. Nation Dan, you're down at the end of the line. You are up first. It, it's going to sound a little weird the way I do it in this order here, but I'm going to give it to Sportsnet uh, for being one of the broadcasters that's just kind of leaving fight replays out of their packages, and it's starting to bug me a little bit more and more. Uh, Jack even addressed it in the game against, uh, I'm trying to remember now, it was the carrick Pizzetta fight, the Habs game. Uh, he mentioned it, that they do show the highlights, and to their credit, later on in the game, they did show a replay of the, the carrick Pizzetta fight. But that was one of the best fights I've seen this season as the guy that runs HockeyFights.com, and we got exactly 0.5 seconds of a replay uh, before they then cut back to play so for me it's just these broadcasts cutting away from one of the more exciting elements of hockey i get it it's a it's a charged conversation but just play the replays of what actually happened in the game and then let's have the discussion after that so cutting the fights out of the replays from sportsnet gets my cold performer of the week i'm upset or just go to hockeyfights.com watch it there yeah right there you go Tyler Ramchuk, you're up next. For our friends at nationgear.ca, which you are currently wearing, mm -hmm. you're a cold performer of the week. People with more than, I'll even say, two brackets for March Madness. and I will Don't you have them. more than one? Nope, I'm in multiple pools. Same bracket. <laughs> same picks. I just think it <laughs> ruins the spirit of the it. The sanctity I, of the yeah, bracket. I'm going to call out one of our coworkers, Brett Holden. Who was like, mm, yeah, I, I think he said he has like seven or eight different brackets. Ooh. And he's How like, long oh. did he take to set well, these things like, up? Mm, yeah, well, my best one is this, this. No, you get no credit if you do well. Zero. You just randomly put together a whole bunch of different brackets. If you want to do two, if you want to be like, ah, you know what? I want to give myself a little bit of wiggle room. I can, I'll respect you a hair. <laughs> but no, March Madness, one bracket. That's where the stakes are at. When you're watching a game and you're like, hmm, well, I have Duquesne in four of my brackets and BYU in three others. I don't really care who wins. Nope, ruins <laughs> it. You're not real. Go away. I hate you. Why are you the way that you are? I hate so much about the things that you choose to be. How many fantasy football teams did you have last year? Two. Oh, okay. All right. I'll All right. So he's one. maintaining the sanctity of his own rules. Oh, I was in the real life one, but I didn't really check that one. In <laughs> the ones I care about, I have my personal one, yeah. and I have the big one, money one I split with one of my buddies. That's it. Same kind of issue there, where a little it's bit like, different. A little bit different. Well, you have to like draft your players, and you, but whatever. then you start once you get into like three and four football teams or hockey teams, you're starting to play matchups of guys that you have in other matchups that you want to do well. Yeah. It's it gets convoluted. You run into that problem, but yeah, I see what you're doing with the madness there. I just don't like again the fun. Pick a bracket, root for those teams. Come on, Rick, you're up next for NationGear.ca or Cold Perform of the Week. I'm going to give it to Manson's kid for breaking Vinny's finger. Mm. That's it. They are just fucking ass right now. Yeah. Mm. I agree. Yeah. Vinny's playing some good hockey, too. Yep. I hope it doesn't affect his hand. Or just his, uh, I guess, his puck maneuverability. Yeah, I don't think it will be. Well, that's good. I appreciate that. Uh, cold performer of the week. Mm, I didn't really have anything set. Hmm. Let me think. I'm just over winter. The snow is, it comes, it goes. I'm over it. I know it's a, we're almost done, but I'm over it. You know? I'm upset. Oops, I pushed that one already. I'm going to go this way. Oh no, God! <laughs> no, God, please, no! 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 It's a long button. It's a great button. We're going to reverse the order. Rick, you're up, f you're up first. NationGear.ca, your hot form of the week. Well, I hope this, this, situation evolves further because I think it's just funny and it's fun to talk about and it's fun to watch but the whole uh, Ipe and Shohei and the illegal gambling and all that stuff going on in Dodgerville I think it's just fun right now and I think uh, I think there's another shoe to drop here the memes are unbelievable like the, the Pete Rose sitting at home going like <laughs> I <re> Shohei is going to go through all of this and get nothing and Pete Rose went through perhaps less or whatever the hell you want to say about him 
And he's, like, not even allowed to say the word baseball, I don't think. Honorary hot performer that wasn't my hot performer is Tyler for being, like, you need to go check out the memes on this Otani situation. Oh, great. I spent at least an hour last night just in tears laughing at some <laughs> of the memes I wrote about it. It's so fucking good. And at first it was like, hey, Shohei, he gave me 4.5 because I'm a degenerate. The next day, when they got a little more heat on it, it's like, whoa, no, he stole that money. Those two stories don't jive with me. There's more to come, and I'm really hoping it comes out. Also, watching their whole situation blow up would be really, really, really funny. Yeah, I hate the Dodgers. Uh, here's your button, Rick. He's a hot guy. There you go. Tyler, you're up next. NationGear.ca, hot form of the week. Uh, I'm just going to give it to, I know they're the sponsor of this segment, but everyone who bought one of the four items we had up for grabs at the Robin Brownlee auction. The money obviously going to a great cause to help his boy Sam, you know, go to school and things like that, help the family with funeral costs. So we we're very, very happy to help them out. We obviously love Brownlee, love his family. So anyone who bought one of the items and donated their uh, money, I appreciate you. Guys. Agreed. Very, very, very generous of all of you. The big guy is smoking hot. Nation Dan, you're up next. NationGear.ca, hop from the week. Uh, again, weird, weird hot performer to give, but, uh, I'm going to give it to George Peros, uh, for his statement that he made earlier this week, uh, saying that he takes more beatings now than he ever did on the ice. That's not true at all. He hides in a shadow somewhere. Agreed. But I, what I do want to give him hot performer for is just coming out and speaking to the, to the media about what's going on in the climate in and around the department of discipline and the player safety. Uh, I do think that George has a better job to do. I think that he has a better job to, uh, replace the fighter that he used to be that we are seeing leave the game now, but at least I'm going to give it to George for coming out and speaking up when uh, you, like you said, Rick, it would be just as easy for him to hide in that glass tower as and continue to be a beyond reproach. But at least he seems like he's giving us a little bit of a tidbit of some information. So George Peros, get to my hot performer. That was too early. To That's right. uh, hot performer of the week for me is easy. Lehman set the over under at one and a half and took the under. Connor Brown is on fire. Let's go. Let's Two go goals Brown. in a week. Come on, buddy. He's a hot guy. Let's go, Connor Brown. I'm cheering for you. I picked five for his total by the end of the year. Let's go, Connor Brown. There you go. Really quickly, take wrap out up the podcast in. with the score prediction for tomorrow's game against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Nation Dan. Five four Leafs win in overtime. Five four Oilers win in OT was gonna be my pick. Seven four Oilers. Four two win. Let's reverse the order. We got a game against the Sens on Sunday, Rick. Six one Edmonton. Tyler. Uh three one Oilers. Five nothing Oilers. 4-2 win coming at you both games. You bet on those. You're going to enjoy yourself. Have a great weekend, everybody.